Hi, my name is Dawn, and for most of my van life experience, I've been a city-dwelling stealth camper, so the whole boondocking experience is kind of new to me. There's a few things that I've experienced in the few times I've gotten the boondock that makes me wish someone talked about these things kind of before I had my first experience, so I thought I'd give a shot making a video about those subjects. P.S. I'm trying to grow this channel, so please, like and subscribe. What is up, YouTube? So, obviously, I decided to give dispersed camping another go. It's pretty hot out here, so I'm in a tank top. <laughs> um, so, there are a couple of things that I feel like people don't talk about enough when it comes to going out to land and doing dispersed camping and basically being out in the middle of nowhere. Like we all fantasize about it, but then you get out here, you're super excited, you set up your camp and then you're like, what now? Now mind you, that's not gonna happen for everybody. Some people are gonna immediately know what to do with themselves, but more often than not, people kind of don't actually. Um, and on top of that, they may encounter some problems that they didn't expect to encounter if their whole existence before this point has been city life. Um, so I wanted to talk about a little bit of those. I wrote them down because I was like, I hope I don't forget <laughs> what I want to say. Um, so one of the first things I want to talk about, this didn't as affect me much the first time I did a whole dispersed camping boondock as it has the second time, which is this time. And... There's a motorcycle coming by, so I'm going to wait. <laughs> Literally, it's the only vehicle I've seen. <laughs> All right, the motorcycle has gone by, so I'm just, I am just—I was just waiting for that noise to kind of disperse. Um, really nice, he waved both times he came by. He rode down that way and then rode back up this way. But anyway, let's talk about um, the things I wanted to talk about. So the first thing I want to talk about is gas. Um, Coming up here, there was a certain point where I realized I was not running into, like, any gas stations by accident, and I was, like, still an hour away from where I was trying to get. Um, I've never thought about having, like, an extra sort of supply of gas just in case, because I was like, one, I do have emergency services that'll bring me gas if I'm on, like, a regular road. Um, I can make a call and do that, and two... Um, I always seem to be in areas where even when I boondocked in Oregon, it seemed like it was a reasonable amount of time between the last time I saw a gas station and getting to the campsite where I wanted to camp. And I just never thought about carrying like an extra thing of gas somewhere or just having it for when I know I'm going to disperse camping just in case to have that extra container of gas. So one of the first things that I really feel like people should think about is just having an extra gas jug for emergencies. And even you have, if you have emergency services that'll bring you gas in a pinch, um, rather that's through your insurance or AAA or whatever, it's also good to, especially because like this dirt road I'm on right now, it probably takes about 45 minutes before you're to something that the, you know, regular road services would count as a road. As of right now, even though this is, I guess it's called a national forest road or something like that, um, even though, like, it, it does exist as far as, like, a BLM site, it's not really counted as, like, a regular road. I'm literally just out in the middle of a dirt, dirt path somewhere for as far as a lot of those emergency services are determined and also because I have a very weak I don't have none but because I have a very weak phone signal right now um, my ability to telephone service for something like gas is really really limited so one of the things I thought is like maybe I should just have a gas jug for when I know I'm just dis dispersed camping and I'd never thought about that before this experience because every other time even when I was in Arizona I felt like I was close enough that if I needed gas I had enough gas to get where I was going and to get back to a gas station before I needed gas and so I never really thought about carrying like an extra gas jug with me. Now, so number two I'm gonna say is having an offline hobby. 
of some sort or a offline something you want to do like to do enjoy to do that's offline because definitely like the first time I came out to BLM land I was like okay now what like you're set up you know you you have your spot and it's a lot of now what and like I said in most situations you're going to have weak to no signal right now I have a very weak signal I could make a phone call if I had to it's about the end of it. I can't download anything. I can't watch anything online. Um, the most I can do is make an emergency phone call if I had to. So then what do you do with yourself? And that's when it's good to have an activity, like motorcycle guy. Motorcycle guy likes to ride his motorcycle. So I'm assuming, I don't know if he's just up here to ride or if he's camping or what, but, you know, once he's set up, he can now do an activity that's fun to him. If you like to play music, that's why you see a lot of van lifers who are, like, strumming along on guitars. Because that's something you don't need other people to do. You don't need electricity to do it. It's something that can occupy you. Um, if you like to take photography, now that's going to require some electricity because you're going to have to charge batteries and, you know, be able to access things. But you don't necessarily need to be online to do photography or even video um, because you can film it take the photographs, go back to a place where you're online, and then you can transfer those things to some online platform if you so desire to do so. But you don't require electricity to be able to, I'm sorry, you do do require electricity, but you don't require to be online to enjoy those hobbies. Did I write down anything else? Um, Bird watching, boating, like if you're boating, you may be specifically targeting areas where you have uh, reasonable access to you know, water, uh, boating is almost kind of a separate thing. So maybe that's a bad example for this, but anything reading, do you like to read? Do you just want quiet time to like read things? Then you, you know, you can have your lounge chair or your hammock or whatever, and you can set that up and you can just have quiet time to read where like nobody's going to disturb you. I've been listening to a lot of audio books. Um, and that's going to get into my next point. (laughs) Um, But it's very, very important to have things you can do offline um, and things you enjoy offline and even things you can enjoy with like a limited amount of electricity if you do find yourself in that situation. It's, you know, if you like to bird watch, if you like to nature walk, any of those things are good. Hiking, like all that stuff is good. And it has to be things you can enjoy without sort of the modern trappings. I think a lot of us, like, our hobbies are very tied to having access to the internet, and we don't realize it until we don't have access to that anymore. So we're loving these beautiful locations we're seeing, but we're not realizing that access to them also might cut us off from an active online life. That doesn't mean not having access to a telephone. Like I said, I do think that is important. Um, Do as much as you can to cover yourself there which I'll get to in another point, but basically you need some sort of hobby that you can enjoy offline. So number three, as far as like enjoying your offline life, there still may be things that require online connections that you can at least prep for being offline, i.e. pre-downloading movies on Netflix, um, having your music as actual mp3 files and not as something that depends on an internet connection. A lot of us use streaming services now, but the problem with a streaming service is it requires the internet, and now you've lost access to your library because your library depends on your internet connection. So having, like, movies, TV shows, and music in some sort of offline, tangible way, like I said, on Netflix, you can pre-download things, And having as much of that as you can will also supplement those times where you just want to enjoy the convenience of, like, uh, the conveniences of home, for lack of a better term, um, while you're out and away and challenged with your internet connection. Now, the thing about pre-downloading things is make sure they actually download it. Like, for me, I have this audiobook I'm listening to. I'm actually listening to The Passage right now. I got it free from the library. But I also did sign up for Audible because I'm not liking the selections I'm finding as free choices. And, you know, I've paid off a couple of credit cards at this point. So, like, adding on an Audible subscription is, like, not even a a sixteenth of what (laughs) having to pay those cards the past, like, year and a half was costing me. So I added on the Audible subscription because I thought it was something that I could manage. And it will allow me to get whatever book I want. I wouldn't have to put it on hold. I wouldn't have to wait for releases from the library. 
you know, I wouldn't have to be put in a digital line for it. So I went ahead and got the Audible subscription. But what I didn't realize is that my books weren't downloaded. Now, my library book was downloaded, so I've been listening to that one. You know, in my, I like to, like, listen to audiobooks while I'm doing stuff. Um, I really like hearing a story while I'm, like, actively doing things, even if it's just setting up this camera right now. And so that one was downloaded. Audible was not. I can get really repetitive, guys. Sorry. And I was really sad about that. And also, my Netflix hadn't downloaded. So maybe if you're going to pre-download things as a prep for being out here, do it while you're sitting still. Don't set it to download while you're driving because something could go wrong and then you'll get out here and not have the entertainment that you expected to have. Now, if you already have those offline hobbies, like I said, the fact that your, you know, digital stuff isn't offline won't kill you. You'll still enjoy yourself, but you just won't have it. So if you like want to watch like a movie before bedtime and it turns out it didn't download, like that could be really bad for you. So here's my my bonus tip and that is external power source. I know some people are like, oh, I only need a like a thousand watt Jackery to run my van or like I have a billion watts of solar on my roof. Nobody has a billion watts of solar. So like I'm not really worried about power and blah, 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 blah. Like I'm assuming at some point you want to walk away from your van. Like you want to park it, leave the house there, walk around and do things or sit away from the van. And so like if you want to do something that requires electricity, charging drone batteries, charging camera batteries, um, charging your cell phone, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's kind of annoying uh, when all of your power is li- linked to you staying at the van. And so I think it's very useful to have an external power source. Now for me, I got the gift of a Rock Pals that I've been using like crazy. You know, I pull that one out of the van all the time. You know, I'll throw it up on my table over there. Um, and use it for stuff and that way I don't have to be up in the van I can also walk away from the van I can take pictures I can take video without having to be like directly on the van and I can have a backup battery charging or whatever on the power station while like I'm actively using my device without having to walk all the way back to the van for it so I think it is absolutely useful whether it's a small power bank or like a Jackery or Rock Pals or whatever you decide to buy. By the way, don't buy cheap. It never works out in the end. Um, Having that available will make it a little easier to like not be directly at the van all the time. It's really nice to have an external power bank or power station that's not a pain to carry or walk around with that you can use outside of the van. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. So if you guys have any thoughts about things like people don't really talk about when it comes to, you know, boondocking for the first time or dispersed camping or whatever, please put those things in the comments because I am certainly no expert. These are just things that have come up with me as I have been learning to disperse camp. (laughs) Um, I still feel like I'm learning. No, 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 don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go. That's what I get for not. cut that out (laughs) but that was actually funny (laughs) the wind almost stole my tent (laughs) so one always another tip always secure (laughs) always secure your if you have a tent or a canopy because I do have ground stakes and weights so I have no excuse I just threw the weights on the legs (laughs) Again, any other tips, throw them in the comments.